G'day folks, so welcome to another video. So, what's in my bushcraft and hiking bag? I get asked this question all the time, so I thought I'd do a little gear load out and show you what I take on an overnight hiking or bushcraft trip. So, let's get stuck into it. Alright guys, well this is pretty much all my gear. So obviously um, depending on where I'm going and what time of year I'm going, um, I'll take different things. But this gives you a nice overview of um, pretty much my entire kit. So over here we've got uh, this sort of sleep system, then I've got my clothes, and then my tools, um, cooking stuff and then just some first aid and fishing gear. So we start from the right. First up we've got my Mont Zodiac 500 sleeping bag. This is a down sleeping bag. Um, it's an Aussie brand out of Canberra. So it's always good to support the, the Aussie brands. Um, and it's just a really good um, sleeping bag. It goes down to about minus two, around zero degrees or minus two. Um, yeah, and pretty much everywhere I go camping and everywhere gets much colder than that. So this does me um, really well. So pretty, pretty stoked with that. And then I've got, next sort, I've just got a little, I think it's a Cedar Summit um, mosquito net. So I just kind of keep in this little drawstring bag. Um, so just taking that, because if, if I decide to sleep just under a tarp on a ground sheet, I might put this over me just to keep some of the bugs away. And then we've got my Cedar Summit Eros pillow, which I absolutely love this thing. Packs down to barely anything, weighs nothing, and it's super comfy. So it's always nice to have these little luxuries when you're out in the bush, because a good night's sleep can mean all the world the next day. And then we've got the Outdoor Research Helium Bivy. So I've used this a bunch of times now. I actually really like it. It's um, pretty light, I think it weighs like maybe 500 grams or something like that. So it's really light, packs down pretty small. Because I've noticed a lot, a few places I've been going recently, I tend to come across a lot of ants. It seems to be um, the bane of my existence at the moment. So when the mosquito net won't do, because um, obviously the ants can kind of crawl underneath that, I tend to sleep in the bivy. Because um, yeah, some of the bull ants in Australia have these big mandibles and they bite like hell. So sometimes it's nice just to roll this out and um, have some protection against it. But yeah, pretty happy with that. Obviously. Bivvies can be a pretty uh, hit and miss. Not everyone seems to like them, but I don't mind them. They're a bit claustrophobic, but you can kind of um, put up with it. And then next we got the, what's this? The Nemo Astra Air Inflatable Mat. I've had this for, gosh, probably three years now, three or four years, and really happy with it. Really nice and light and small. I've never had any issues with it. I've never had a puncture or anything, and still doing me strong all these years later. So pretty happy with that. Also, being sort of like a bright yellowy orange, obviously most of the gear here you'll notice <laughs> is sort of uh, greens and, um, and tans and stuff like that so all kind of blends in the bush but I find if I, by having this a nice bright color if I ever get stuck and need a sort of signal a helicopter or something I can sort of lay this out and it sort of stands out against the, against the vegetation so it's kind of handy having one or two pieces in the kit that are nice and bright. Then next up this is a new addition to the kit so this is the Helicontex Poncho I haven't actually used it yet. I've obviously tried it on at home and stuff and it seems to fit nice and well. The benefits of having this rather than a, like a rain jacket is a rain jacket only serves one purpose and it's, um, it's only going to sort of cover your top half. Whereas a poncho, this can go, come, I pretty much cover most of my torso and it can go over my bag. So if I'm hiking through the rain, it keeps everything nice and dry. Also, it um, doubles up as a small tarp and you can also use it as a ground sheet as well. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with it and it packs down really small. Um, and it's really nice and light. So I think this might um, sort of stay in my kit pretty regularly, I think, because I might even substitute my other ground sheet for this in future because it doubles up as um, a few different things. So pretty happy with that so far. Uh, and so speaking of ground sheets, so this is just a yeah, small little ground sheet that I've got. Um, does the job, it's really good, nice and light and small. And um, I've used it plenty of times before and I really like it. But like I said, I might start using the poncho as a ground sheet instead, just because like I said, it, doubles up a few different things. Uh, speaking of ground sheets, so this is the other ground sheet I have. Um, this is by a brand called Remote Projects. They're based out of Byron Bay. And this is wax canvas. So it's a little bit heavy, so I don't take it on hikes, but if I ever go canoe camping or car camping or something like that, and I want a nice 
durable ground sheet, then um, I'll, de I'll definitely take this because it's really nice quality. Yeah, it's heavy duty, so it's going to stand up to the test of time and just a, a good bit of solid kit to yeah, have in the car. And then next up, we've got my Alton Goods hammock, which is once again, nice and light. I've um, been using this for a number of years and very happy with it. Inside here, I've just got a, some tree hugger straps. So this is my Alton Goods 3x3 three three meter tarp. If you see my recent videos, you'll see me using this. Probably got it about six months ago and I've um, taken it on a few trips now and really happy with it. It's really nice and light, um, packs down really small. Um, smaller than my DD hammock tarp. So yeah, very, very impressed with that. And then moving into the clothing system. So start up here, this is my Kathmandu down jacket. Uh, so I got this last year and it does a really good job of keeping me warm during winter. So pretty happy with that. And then the trusty flannel, or well, for you guys overseas, the flannelette shirt. Always take this on a, on a hike. Uh, and then we got, so this is the pants. Um, so the bottom half to these pants. So this brand is called Mountain Design. Once again, I'm pretty sure they're an Aussie brand as well. Um, and they're really nice and light. And I do have a, p a pair of Fuel Ravens, which um, I was using for a number of years, but I find in summer they're quite thick and so they're kind of quite hot to wear. So I've been using this over the last um, couple of months and I'm really happy with them. They are obviously not as durable as a Fuel Raven, um, but they're nice and lightweight. And when you're hiking through summer, um, you want something nice and light. and yeah, this, this does the job nice and well, so. And then next up we've got just a pair of our Merino wool thermals. And then some Cedar Summit Gators. I think the, I think these are the Quagmire um, yeah, Cedar Summit Gators. And I haven't used them a bunch. I've used them maybe once or twice. Um, they're kind of a new addition to the kit. Just figured I spend so much time out in the bush by myself and um, I'm always coming across snakes. I actually just saw one just earlier before when I was hiking into here, so. They're always out and about, so I figured I might just keep these in the kit from now on because they're nice and lightweight. They weigh barely anything. They do take up a bit of room, but um, I figured just a lot of places I go, it's always very dense scrub, so it's always nice to have something to protect your shins and just to keep the snakes at bay. So I think that's going to be something I'll probably have to start using in the future just because and I've been playing Russian roulette so far. Um, I think it'd be nice just to keep these in the kit when I need to. And then last but not least, the... Um, just a, a beanie. All right, now we move into the uh, equipment. So I've just got here some, it's about 10 meters worth of um, paracord, 550 paracord, just with a carabiner. And uh, this is just some thicker, I think they call it battle rope. Um, so it's like a seven strand um, rope and really strong. I think I can't remember what, how much it um, can hold, but it's, it's a lot. So I kind of keep about 10 meters of this. Um, both of these I just strapped to the front of my pack on the molly webbing. And um, yeah, you always need a bit of extra cordage, so it's nice just to have it handy. The reason I've got the thicker, um, the thicker rope here is just because hiking a lot of sandstone country, um, sometimes you need to sort of lower your bag down off a little rock ledge, or you might even need to tie this off to a tree and kind of help yourself down. Like I wouldn't use it for abseiling, but just if you want a sort of like a hand line just to help yourself down, um, this will come in handy. And then uh, next to it, we've got my Van Quest um, Husky organizer, which I absolutely love. Just keeps all my bits and pieces nicely organized. Like I've got my Sawyer water filter in here, other bits and pieces like a lighter and a pencil and um, a Gerber multi-tool. All my batteries for my camera, um, a charger, multi uh, a power bank, and also my flint and steel kit. So I've just got yeah, flint and steel um, and also a little Fresnel lens. So obviously you can't see it now because it's overcast, but if it was sunny, you'd be able to sort of use that to yeah, start a fire by um, focusing the, the sun's rays. I'm gonna do another video where I sort of go through um, the VanQuest organizer in detail, so I can show you all the stuff that I keep in here and go through its specs, so I'll do that in another video. Um, the next up here, we've just got a, a small dry bag, and inside here, we've just got some more paracord sort of one, two and three meter lengths of paracord um, just in this little dry bag. So it's always nice just to have some small bits just um, if you need to tie something up. And also having the dry bag, that can double as a pillow if I need to. I can fill it there, clip it up and use it as a pillow. Or I can fill it up with water. I just sort of need to transport some water to the camp to maybe put the fire out. Um, yeah, it's just nice to keep some things nice and dry. So it's a handy little bit of kit. Uh, next up, got my Silky Gomboy. I think this is a 240, so 
really happy with this saw. I was using the Barco Laplander for a number of years, but we got this last year and I absolutely love it. It just cuts through wood like butter. It does a really good job. The teeth on it are pretty, um, pretty vicious, and so it does a really good job of cutting through the Aussie hardwood. And it's nice and light and small as well. Because I've got this other um, hand saw. It's, uh, it's by Agua Canyon. It's a Boreal 21. So I got it at the end of last year. Clip that in here. Yeah, so it's a pretty cool saw. I've only used it a couple of times because when I got it, um, the bushfires kicked off in Australia. So a lot of camping was put on hold. Um, and so I haven't really had too much of a chance to get out and use this. But for trips where weight isn't an issue and I'm not sort of hiking too far, then I'm definitely going to take this because it's just a beast of a saw. It folds down to uh, pretty much nothing. So it is a little bit heavy, obviously, um, compared to the Silky Gomboy. So it really depends what kind of trip I'm doing. Like I said, if I'm not hiking too far, then I'll take this. But if I'm going for a decent hike, then I'll take the Silky Gomboy. And that just folds up like that. So pretty handy little bit of kit, this one. Really like it. Can to get some use out of it. So this is a Holter Force Classic Hatchet. Uh, it's pretty lightweight, nice and small. I generally don't take it on too many um, hikes just because in Australia, I find you don't really need an axe or a hatchet, just like you guys in sort of the Northern Hemisphere. I find a saw is much more useful. Um, so I'd rather take a saw than take this, but it is nice and handy just to take on um, some trips when I know I'm not having to hike too far and I want to do a bit more bushcrafty kind of stuff, then I'll take this. But generally speaking, I tend to leave this at home because yeah, with a knife and a saw, I can pretty much do everything I need to. And then down here, got my new addition. Um, this is uh, by Core Knife and Tool. This is a Bushman. I'm absolutely stoked with it. I have shown you guys a number of videos, but such a beautiful knife. Really happy with it. The quality of it's lovely. The leather work on this is awesome too. So very happy with this knife. So it's, um, yeah, it's called the Bushman by Core Knife and Tool. If you want to check it out. And this is also from Core Knife and Tool. It's just um, a little pouch. He calls the Swaggy's Pantry or the Swagman's Pantry. So basically inside here, just little vials um, where you can keep like your salt and pepper or some spices or um, a little bits and pieces and once again the leather work on this is lovely really happy with this so another little um, nice little bit of kit so here we've got a drawstring um, cotton sack just to keep my food in it's nothing special and then I've got a little gas stove which I don't use a whole lot um, but it is nice just to have it this is the Optimus Crux light so it packs down really small and it's a good little stove um, but I tell you, like I said I don't really use it a whole lot um, here I've just got some steel wool and just a little leather pouch. I tend to keep my tinder in. So this is a, another recent addition. So this is a, is it Trangia or Trangia? They always seem to say it wrong. Um, but yeah, it's a Trangia Metho stove. So yeah, so um, I've used it a couple of times now and really like it. It's nice and silent too. So I find using this gas stove it's a bit loud, and sometimes when you're in the bush, you kind of just want to be nice and silent, not have this rearing gas stove going. So I find cooking over this sort of silent flame is yeah, it's really nice. So and that's just a little bottle of metho as well. And then also during summer, when it's uh, yeah, pretty bloody hot, you don't want to get a fire started in the morning, I find this is nice and useful just to yeah, cook up your brekkie and not having to worry about getting a fire going. And then so down here, just got my water bottle and cook set. So, just got my Pathfinder's one litre stainless steel water bottle, which you can also put over the fire and boil up some water to sterilize. And here's my Pathfinder's um, 750 mil nesting cup. So that just slots in there, nice and snug. And in here I can cook up my rice, my pasta, or have a few gin and tonics while I'm sitting around the fire. And then here's a, a, here's a stove stand. So basically put a, either sticks under there or a little um, hexamite fuel tablet or even just chuck that straight in the fire. You put that on top and boil up your water. So pretty handy bit of kit. And the best thing about all this stuff is it all just slots in nice and snug. So it keeps it all quite compact. And there's just a little lid that goes with it. Actually, I think I forgot two more things. I just realized. So just tucked down the back of my bag is my um, yeah, cooking system. So. Here I've just got a snow, uh, yeah, the brand's called Snow Peak, it's just a titanium plate. So with this I can yeah, cook up over the fire, cook up some steak or pretty much all my food I cook in this. Uh, you can also use it in the morning just with your cereal because it's got 
reasonable um, edges on it so you can put your milk in there and it's not going to spill out. So that's a very, very handy bit of kit. I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger, maybe like an inch or two bigger, but um, it still does the job. So very happy with that. And then next up is my Alton Goods Titanium Grill, which is a very handy bit of kit. So really small, um, slides just down the back of my pack nice and easily, barely even notice it there. It's very light and it's just nice to chuck that out of the fire and then um, yeah, cook over, cook over the hot coals. So really enjoy using that. And then here I've just got classic chopping board. Once again, weighs nothing. Just put that on top of there and I can just chop up. So that way I'm not using my knife and my metal plate because I've had plenty of people tell me in the past to stop doing that. So I've gone to these plastic chopping boards and I'm very happy with, happy with it. And just over here, we've just got a hip flask which I usually carry some port or tawny or even some musket. Probably not everyone's cup of tea, but I obviously love this stuff. And when you're sitting around a fire after a hard day hiking, listening to some uh, Johnny Cash or some Paul Kelly and sipping on some uh, a musket, life doesn't get much better than that. So I always like to carry yeah, some music out in the bush. It's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, like I said, after a long day hiking, there's nothing better than just relaxing by a fire, listening to some music. Uh, next up, I've got my lead lens. Uh, I think it's called the MH8, uh, which I got a couple months ago for Christmas. And yeah, really happy with it. Um, it's got a nice wide beam on it. You can also focus it to a nice narrow beam. Uh, it's rechargeable and you can also um, put some AA batteries in here as well. So pretty handy bit of kit. I can use, I can charge this off my power bank in here. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. All right, and the next up is my Shemag. I got this a couple of weeks ago, so I've used it a bunch of times. I'm pretty happy with it. If you're not sure what a Shemag is, just Google it and you can find all the uses for this thing. Um, just to name a few, it's a head covering, so if it's sunny or dusty or sandy, you can just wrap this around your head to keep yourself protected. It's obviously a towel, um, so you can wash yourself and wash up your, your cook kit. Um, you can also use your knife to scrape some of the fibers off it to use a, a strike it with your, your ferro rod um, to start a fire. You can filter water through it. There's plenty of uses for it. Oh, you can use it as a sling if you've got an injury, so heaps of uses for this thing, so it's a pretty handy bit of kit to have. All right, next up is probably one of the most important bits of kit I have. And this is the ACR Rescue Link PLB. I would not go in the bush um, without this thing now. It is super important to have. And it is a little bit expensive at about 350 bucks. Um, but I think it's one of the most important things you can have because especially for, like myself, if you go out in the bush by yourself and you get bitten by a snake or you roll over and twist your ankle or break your leg or you get lost, this thing will save your life. And so it is a bit pricey, but I think the investment is very worthwhile so um, it's definitely worth looking into this it's just a PLB so it's just a beacon so it doesn't do navigation like the Garmin inReach and you can't send text with it but um, I can just set this off and it'll go to a satellite to a communication center and then they'll send help so very handy bit of kit to have I might start looking into maybe getting the Garmin inReach um, just because it's got a few more capabilities like the navigation um, and being able to sort of send a text if I ever get stuck or just want to let my partner that know that I'm running a bit late or something like that. Um, so I might look into getting that, but for the time being, um, this does the job. So very important bit of kit. And then just next up, I've got my first aid kit. Uh, it's a pretty standard first aid kit, so I'm not gonna go through all the contents of it. I might do another video one day if you guys wanna see that. But the only additions I got in here are probably a few extra compression bandages. Because if I ever get bitten by a snake, uh, the first thing I wanna do is wrap that limb up with ideally two or three compression bandages, and then set off that PLB to get some help in. But apart from that, it's just a pretty standard first aid kit. And then next, I've got, it's just a one meter by one meter um, square bit of orange cotton. I don't take this all the time, but if I'm, if I'm gonna go somewhere that's nice and remote, I'll probably chuck this in the kit because say if I do ever get into trouble and I have to set off this PLB, most of my kit is pretty, um, <laughs> blends into the bush pretty well. So I kind of want something that's gonna stand out, that I can lay out on the ground or put on a, a rocky um, outcrop or something just so if a helicopter does go past you can see me nice and clearly but that's also the reason i've got the the orange uh, yellow orange nemo mat because that can also double as um sort of a signaling device but yeah so if ever go somewhere remote i'll probably usually take that as well and then just here i've just got a silver compass with my right in the rain notebook which i keep the pencil in my organizer and this is i find a pretty handy bit of kit to have so inside here, I've just got two plastic bags. They're 90 centimeters by 60 centimeters each. And the idea of this is uh, just a transpiration bag. So if, 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 I, if I ever find myself somewhere where there's no water source, I can always wrap this around the, a branch of a tree and sort of capture that 
transpiration um, and it can condensate in the bag and form at the bottom of the bag and I can just pour that out into my water bottle. So I've done it a couple of times before and I've gathered about sort of three to 400 mils, sometimes even up to 500 mils of water. So it's a pretty handy bit of um, knowledge to have because if you ever get stuck, it requires very minimal effort. You just gotta basically sit around and wrap this around a, a branch and let that do all the work for you. So I find that's pretty handy just to keep in the bag. Weighs nothing again. Also, if you ever come across maybe like so like a trickle of water coming out of like a rocky um, outcrop or something and you can't quite capture it maybe in the nesting cup, you can always lay this out and sort of collect all that water and then pour that into your water bottle. So uh, I think that's pretty uh, useful to keep in the, in the kit. And so just here, I've just got a pretty standard blue bandana. So nothing special. I generally just keep this in my pocket. So when I'm hiking along and I get a bit sweaty, I can just sort of wipe the sweat off my face. Or if I'm not wearing my hat, I can wrap around my head and sort of keep the, yeah, the sweat out of my eyes or the sun off my forehead. Uh, and now to my fishing gear. So everyone knows I'm not the best fisherman in the world, but I do go to a lot of places um, that are sort of next to rivers and waterways, like lakes and stuff. So I like to just chuck it in the kit and uh, give it a red hot crack. I'm getting a little bit better. I'm definitely <laughs> not the best fisherman in the world, but I like to give it a go. And so with, uh, with persistence, hopefully um, it'll pay off one day. But yeah, just in here is just a pretty standard um, travel rod. Breaks down to four pieces. Um, the brand of this is called Savage Gear. And then I've also just got a box of lures and then my reel, so. Yeah, so there you have it. That's pretty much all the gear that I use throughout the year. I do have a hiking tent, but it's a little bit big and heavy and bulky. I'm not a big fan of it, so I decided to not include it in this, um, this gear loadout. Obviously, depending on the time of year um, and where I'm going, I sort of mix up different things, but uh, yeah, this gives you a nice overview. All right, well, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it's always nice to sort of see what other people take out in the bush so you can sort of get some ideas. So hopefully I've given you guys some tips, um, maybe ways you can improve your system. If you guys have any tips for me, I'm always keen to sort of, uh, yeah, change things up and improve my system. So feel free to yeah, leave me a comment below with some um, tips. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. I'm going to get on to have you because I'm getting absolutely hammered by mosquitoes. Um, it's starting to get a little bit late, so. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you like this kind of stuff, then feel free to give me a thumbs up and a subscribe because that would really help me out. So anyway, till next time guys, peru.